Afternoon, tribe. I've got all. Uh, I've got my fancy threads on for you. Um, changing my appearance for these uh, these updates now. You'll always see me in a in a shirt and tie when I speak to you now. Um, clearly not. Um, I've just been at some fundraising meetings uh, in the Eagle's Nest um, with the amazing Zoe. Just tucked over there quietly, so I'll try not to get too tongue tied. Um, I just want to give you like another quick blast on on what's happening. So uh, you've all been seeing that we, we had the teams up in Lincoln who have just done an amazing job up there for the people at Waynefleet. Bob Chalice and his crew have, um, have been involved in the very upper echelons of that, uh, of that response in organisations with the, the LRFs. And actually, if anything, it would have been better if they'd just been left to get on with it and they'd have got things done a lot quicker is the feedback I've been getting from various organisations. And that's just mega. Like, I'm, like Lovely to see the grey shirts getting stuck in at home and helping out uh, the people in Lincoln there. You know, it's a shame we couldn't get into more houses, but for various insurance reasons, they had their own adjusters and stuff, so we couldn't do all of them, because I know if we could have got all the grey shirts up there, we'd have everything tied up and done by now, and everyone would be moved back in. But, you know, to all of you guys that uh, and girls that went to, to Waynesfleet, you know, thank you so much for, for representing uh, the brand in such an amazing way, and doing such great work up there, you know, from the homeowners to the counsellors, to the emergency services, like, you absolutely represented us, so thank you so much. Um, we've got uh, Ben Lampard and Paul Taylor in Sierra Leone at the minute, just finishing off the recce. I think they're due back uh, today. Um, and that, that's about community resilience all the way from that community level all the way up to government capacity building. And there's just so much opportunity for missions there. Um, in a very permissive environment um, is the feedback I'm getting. I need to read the recce reports later on today when I'm on the train. But there is just a list of projects as long as your arm where we're looking to hopefully partner with uh, within Marsat on delivering that everything from community all the way up to government. So watch this space for for more updates, and um, I think Ben will do some updates to you on that as uh, as things develop. Um, funding we've uh, we have got so much tempo around fundraising at the moment. Uh, last night we had an amazing evening at the RAC Club with a select few funders filling up their support squad. These are the um, not necessarily high net worth people, but people that can want to be involved in this, but can't necessarily be a grey shirt. So they're helping us fund at levels of at one, five, and ten thousand pounds respectively, and they come into the support squad. So we're having a donor event last night. Uh, Holly Kimball came and spoke. I absolutely knocked their socks off. Uh, she was ever present in the uh, in the Mozambique response. For those of you who don't know Holly, um, she's an um, innovation engineer with the MOD and just all round top grey shirt and she was brilliant last night really just added so me just standing up there prattling on you know someone that was actually on the ground delivering the work uh, she was mega so thanks Holly for last night um, and that was uh, a really successful fundraising evening and Claire Dake and the team have got loads of people to work with coming out the back of that then rolling forward to next week we launch our first ambassadors evening now this isn't like celebrity ambassadors this isn't um, you know like patrons you know we're not going to get Ross Kemp along this is about you know, successful people in various lines of business that can leverage their network on our behalf to go and gather um, more donors, you know, so these are an extension of us. That's launching uh, next Wednesday. Um, really, really impressive group of people coming to that now because we've got so much amazing case study and content to talk about now to them. You know, we've moved, as I said, from the, the concept to the proven and that is just opening, you know, a million more doors to us. Um, if you read the Telegraph, you'll have seen that uh, Nick Parker's open letter was in there last week. That certainly rattled some cages and opened some conversations. The actual reason I'm in a shirt and tie in the middle of the day is because I've just been with the Conservative Friends for International Development and the Conservative Friends of the Armed Forces. The, this is basically just um, subsections of the Conservative Party that link into various parts of, of the UK's communities. And we're looking to see there what what we can do with them. It, they weren't necessarily decision makers like we'd hoped, but they're certainly influencers and they can connect us into to different parts of Parliament and they're looking to throw us a, a parliamentary evening in the autumn where we can you know, stand up in a, in a room there and get various parliamentarians to come and hear about the great work of Team Rubicon UK and you know, what we think we can do in, in changing that system. So an entirely worthwhile meeting that uh, Paul Godonis, one of our trustees, uh, jacked up and, uh, and he took me along to make sure I didn't uh, make too much of a mess of it. So like, thanks Paul for, uh, for leading in. Um, and then this is just a quick fire update. Uh, last bit is um, around the the grey shirt trustee position that I mentioned a few months ago. And Mozambique happened, and all sorts of other stuffs happened. So we haven't done it yet. So this is me actually telling you we're going to do it now ahead of the next trustee meeting, which is the 18th of July. 
So I've spoken to a few of you offline that are interested, um, and, but it's open to any grey shirt to apply for. So if you're interested in being a trustee and being part of the board, then um, then please apply. The, the way to do it, um, we're going to put a note out on the Friday email, which will have the sort of legal roles and responsibilities of the trustee as well. Zoe's going to put that on the Friday email. But if you're interested, it's about writing a covering letter and your CV and sending in that to that. Well, sorry, excuse me, sending that to Zoe uh, and to her email address. That's ferries at teamrubiconuk.org. Ferries is F E R R I E S at teamrubiconuk.org. So send her a covering letter and a CV. And the covering letter, like, you be creative in that. You know, in that letter, just say, you know, this is what I think I would bring to the board. This is why I want to do this. You know, I want to be part of this journey going forward. And that's the bit we're really going to look at. Um, obviously, I know quite a few of you, um, certainly the ones that you've spoken to me, like I know you very well, but you, there could be someone out there that I don't know so well who would be an amazing trustee. And bear in mind, it's not me that's choosing it. It's Nick Parker. So, you know, some of you probably know him less than me. Um, so, you know, in that letter, just say what your idea of joining the board would be and what you would bring. You know, what I what I would really look for from a, a grey shirt joining that board is to be the grey shirt voice at board level. Um, so someone that has been on the receiving end of what the organisation is and does and wants to represent the whole grey shirt at trustee level. Um, and that would be your key area of responsibility. You know, the trustees, is, we've got like a financier, we've got a lawyer, we've got people that are good at what we do, you know, the wisdom. This is the volunteer voice at board level. I think it's a hugely exciting opportunity. I also think it's just an amazing representation of what this organisation is, where like, hopefully you feel it and you know it, but like we value the fact that the volunteer is this organisation and we, and we want to make sure that that's represented, not just at the executive level, you know, where people come through the system and into the executive, but also all that support level. So, covering letter and a CV to Zoe, um, and the closing date for those will be next Wednesday, close of business, so 5 p.m., uh, next Wednesday. Uh, I'm looking at my watch, that's not going to tell me the date, but today is Thursday the 27th, so next Wednesday at 5 o'clock, please. Um, on the Friday email, there will be a, 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 role, a roles and responsibility. It's a very standard, this is what a trustee is responsible for. It's not all tiered up, we haven't written it, but you have to understand what a trustee does and also the fact that that gives you personal responsibility and personal exposure for the priority of the organisation. So it comes with personal risk. Um, so it's just about understanding what it is you're applying for. Um, I would love to see you know, a, like a really big handful of you um, applying for this because that would tell me you, you want to be a part of this and also that you feel like we, we really mean it when we say that we want a, a wide covering of applications. So that's the trustee position. We'll do a really quick turnaround. Nick Parker will um, then interview the, the shortlist ahead of the next trustee meeting so that we can then take the um, the chosen candidate to the next trustee meeting presented to the board as this is the person we would like to be a trustee so the board can then vote on it and they would then be a trustee from then on going forward so mega exciting I would love to see as many applications from you all as possible send that to Zoe's inbox um, and look, that's it from now just a really quick blast and I'll, I'll do another one uh, once we close out the week just to let you know how we're getting on right tribe have a great time in the sunshine. See you all soon.